these days I feel like there's almost two different types of hunters. It's your guys that are chasing experience and adventure and testing themselves. And then there's the guys that are doing it for the photos and for the bragging rights. And that's all they care about. The guys that come out here with the right mentality for the right reasons, they appreciate everything that's difficult about this hunt. Getting to come out here and be away from the rest of the world, from all the craziness, you know. It's just you with your thoughts and the guys around you. You learn a lot out here, not just about the landscape or the environment that you're in out here, but a lot about yourself. And to me, that's the stuff that I look back on the most. It's a cool hunt this week because we're with Trey Dyer who works with the East Foundation. Trey had us down to the El Salas Ranch a couple weeks ago for a Nilgai hunt and uh, started telling them about this stuff out here in the Chinatis and he had always wanted to actually do a real mountain audad hunt. Trey's just super easy going, kind of up for everything and always interested in what's going on. I think some guides kind of get annoyed when clients always asking questions, but for me, like that's what tells me you appreciate it. You realize like how special this kind of country is. When I was growing up, I was your stereotypical little American wannabe cowboy kid. From John Wayne to a bull rider, I wanted to be it all. Guiding hunts out here, that would never cross my mind. Here we are 25 years later, right where I've always wanted to be, but doing something completely different. You know, I like hunting with people that are fired up about what we're doing. This place is one of those places you want it to be a secret. You don't want a ton of people coming out here, but uh, you want to share it with the people that will appreciate it and Trey's one of those. Yeah, so we're gonna go uh, right up in here, like all this flat country is where we're gonna camp. There's gonna be a switchback old horse trail that goes up there, which is that canyon mm -hmm. right there, with the big shadowed wall there. Right. And uh, that's what we walk. A week before the start of a hunt, I'm probably thinking about the hunt that I'm on at that moment. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of thought out long planning that goes into these trips because you're constantly going this time of year. But we've kind of got it down as far as food and water goes. And there's a lot of challenges with being a guide and it's not just waking up every morning and going hunting and being excited because you're out on the mountain today and not sitting in an office. That's right home. Designated parking. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, I may be in the Chinatis one week and then Sonora, Mexico, and from there I go to Rock Springs for an axis deer hunt. It's not one thing in one place. It's kind of everything. Past couple years, I've definitely seen myself fall more and more in love with the desert country. Home sweet home. Last time I was here, there was no water. So that's everything out here. If you've got water, you're gonna have animals. I think you have to have some sort of fascination with that to be a guide in those types of environments. Because if you don't appreciate that, I can promise you there's a lot easier places to go hunt. There's some good ones. We got a group of sheep up there. Probably six or seven shooter rams. We got rams rutting, we got rams fighting. Everybody's doing what they should be. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on them until dark or until they go to bed. Ah, a little chilly this morning. And it's definitely colder today than it was yesterday morning. A little more humidity, a little frost on the ground. Go from summer to winter real quick out here. The density is super high out here, a lot of sheep in this area, but as nomadic as these sheep are, they could be here today and uh, you could see nothing tomorrow. So you're crossing your fingers every single night. 
you know, these sheep are not from here, obviously, but I don't think there's a better place in the planet for them to exist. Like, they absolutely thrive out here. These types of mountains can't give life to a whole lot of species, but the odd-eyed sheep sure know how to live in it. This landscape is so unchanged. Yeah, there's a lot of history out here. Many things from, you know, early Spanish culture, then cowboy and Indian and outlaw days. Kind of country where I'm always looking at the ground. I'm looking in every cave I walk by because you don't know what's stashed in some of this country, you know. Everything that inspires me roots from just an appreciation and like a infatuation with my ancestry. Where they came from, what they did, and where they did it. Look in the corner right there, like how black that is right there in that one spot. Maybe a fire? I guarantee you in the history of the world, in the history of humanity, somebody's been in here and ridden a storm out at least. Oh yeah. I've just always been completely obsessed with the Western culture and like the adventure side of that. I think that's why I ended up the way that I did, running a cowboy and Indian's outfit. We probably have similar conversations as our ancestors did 150 years ago. Riding out in the middle of lawless country, not knowing what's gonna happen. I go start out the front again. The sheep are gonna be a little later getting out of their beds. Last night was a night to bury 20 or 30 of them in a cave and mm -hmm. wake up the next afternoon, you know. That's kind of the frustrating thing about all that is like a lot of people come out here and uh, especially clients and stuff because you know, they're asking what to expect and everything. And you could see 200 sheep in one day have a really slow day. The challenge is being a guide, number one, without a doubt, is time away from home. You know, it's uh, time away from your family, and that's, that's a tough part of it. For us to make a living, for us to get paid, we have to be away. What you'll notice is like when they're rutting, mm -hmm. they're usually gonna be more in the open looking country up there, you know, because that's where the most sheep can fit. I just got married two months ago and hunting season started. So I'm well into the grind right now and uh, a lot tougher than it was when she was just my girlfriend. I don't know what changed or why, but it's just a different feeling. We got a group of sheep way up high right now. I know there's at least one bigger hand that I can see already. I want to kind of play it by ear and see what they do for a little bit. This job takes a lot of sacrifice from me, but it takes even more sacrifice from my wife because I love doing this. I think we got a good sheep. He looks heavy. I love seeing people get excited. Ooh, they're getting killed. Yeah, there is a third. She looks big. I want to be a part of somebody's experience that they've been dreaming of for years. The good one just bedded. 4.45. We could get down there, but the only thing I worry about is him being too high. They're still bedded. We're gonna take your time. Oh shit, he just stood up. If he takes a couple more steps, he's gonna be behind that wall. Hard angle. Yeah, as soon as he opens up.
it on your chest. If you don't like it though, don't shoot. Dropped him. I like put it. A, put another one in the chamber. Let's watch him you drop him though. He ain't he ain't moving. Hell of a shot, Trey. That's a hell of a shot, dude. Uh -huh. He hammered it. He just folded. We got a good little track to get over there now. It's hard to say what really grips me the most. I think a lot of it is just doing something that you love because you can. Oh man, he's a hammer. God, oh, he's a tank. Pretty work, dude. Appreciate Pops it. to be here with you, man. It's almost more fun to guide than to actually have the rifle for yourself. And being thankful for the little things, you know, that's something that I've for sure learned from being a guide in some of the areas that I've gotten to hunt. And you can apply that to real life too, back at home. It's just the way you look at every situation around you.